Okay, folks. Um, thought I would put together a bit of a vid, a video here, um, just to show you how to disassemble PST Echelon and what goes on inside it. Um, you know, see how it's made, so it works. Pretty straightforward, really. Um, what you've got here, this is the bare Echelon assembly from my PST. This end here would be where the objective um, gold tube screws onto. Um, this end here is where the black box screws onto. Um, the only thing that's uh, slightly different with mine is I've just removed the uh, plastic ring that goes around the tuning ring. Okay, and all that does is that it's got a screw that goes through and just locates in one of these holes here. And by tuning and by turning this, it tunes the PST. Okay, tunes the Etalon. Okay then. So um, first steps in um, disassembling it. If you can hear noise, by the way, we've got roadworks outside, but uh, don't worry about that. First steps in disassembly. Most useful tool, I think, is um, is a 300 mil metal rule. Um, it's going to be useful in a minute for showing you a few measurements and things like that. Okay, so just on the end here, this is the uh, the front collimating lens um, to make the beam path parallel, collimated as it goes to the outline. Um This just unscrews. If you put that in there and just give it a twist you'll see it unscrews. Um, so I've done this a few times. First time you'll find it's probably slightly tight but there is absolutely no Loctite at all I found used in any of the two PST Etalons that I've, I've taken apart so far. So this removes. Um, you've got the collimating lens here. Right, so it's a bit grubby, a bit dusty but I'm not too worried about that. Things like that can clean off. Um, this one here, if you so wish, this one will also unscrew well, it's going to be a bit tight. Should really clamp it down. I don't want to bend my rule, but that will also unscrew. That releases um, that lens there. Um, the lens itself is, when you remove it from the cell, is 25.4 millimeters, bang on an inch lens. Okay. Um, very interesting feature of this: the uh, the threads on here, um, the diameter here is M48, um, which the one, one of the consequences I found for this. Um, in particular with my 127mm PST mod, I didn't want to cut the tube down but what you can do is um, when you've got your PST nose piece screwed into the end of there, 2 inch nose piece um, if you use barrel extensions you can actually mount it so the first relay lens is sat considerably further away than it is normally i.e. much higher up into the tube, much closer to the minus 200mm focus position which is what's needed. I've done this um, I've got various things. I've used an old uh, Barlow lens that's given me some some extension. Um, in total, my system I'm probably running at somewhere about 100 mil um, extension on the end to get it, as I say, higher up in the telescope tube to to get this magic minus 200 mil position um, without cutting the tube down. Um, something which I guess if you've got something like an astrophysics or a tack refractor or you know. Um, a tech refractor, something like that. You don't really want to be cutting the thing down, to be honest. But I think by doing it this way, it opens up lots of possibilities for PST modders to use really quite expensive refractors without actually modifying, damaging um, th their tube or damaging it, its resale value, should they wish. Okay, so that's your first collimating lens. As I say, that will screw perfectly, quite nicely into any two-inch adapter, like so. Right, next stage. Um, you can see here, um, I'll bring it a little bit close to the camera, there's the etalon there, um, the etalon so it's covered in fingerprints, um, don't worry about that, it'll all clean off. Um, you can see here, if I tune it, it actually rotates that assembly, and what I can do, if I tune that all there, that's really going to slacken this off, and then I can just unscrew this, it really does unscrew, I'm going to do this by hand. Um, again, there's I can't make any Loctite on this because it's designed to be a free moving part. Um, so I'm going to take that out, like so. Um, and what you can see is um, there's the holes where the screw on the tuning ring goes in. We've got quite a coarse thread there. There's a lot of grease here. I've no idea what grease it is. Um, it's a clear grease. Um, it's, it's, it's quite runny. It's not very viscous. Um, but inside, importantly, what we've got here is this white o-ring and um, that compresses down onto the top surface of the etalon. Um, 
the Athlon, as you can see, I've got to be careful, I don't want this to fall out. I'm going to use my fingers, excuse them. Um, Edelon sits in there. Um, you can see there's a lot of lateral play in there, and even when that is in place, there's still a good few mil lateral play. And I think this is one of the reasons why we're not getting even fields across the um, across the field of view with PSD mods. Um, what I've done with my other previous with my other Echelon is just centralise it and just screw it back in, um, and that seems to hold it for a while. I think of it as a bit like collimating the Echelon. Okay, anyway, Echelon itself really easy to get out. It just sits in here, so we'll tip that out like so. It's covered in grease. Okay, the, this clear grease. I'm, it, it's all over my fingers. It's all over the face of the Echelon, but I'm not too worried about that. You can see the Echelon's quite a thick unit. It's got index marks as well. Um, I can I can actually physically see um, there is an air gap between the two faces. I'm not sure it's going to show up, but there is an air gap. I can see that by holding it to the light to the window. Um, measuring this, it is coming in at I reckon it's quite difficult to do 16 mil thick, which would put each one of these um, Etalon plates about 8 mil thick, something like that. Um, you can see it, it's got a, a mirrored centre. Overall diameter is 30 mil. The mirrored centre itself is ever so slightly over 20 mil, maybe 21, 22 mil, something like that. Okay, like so. Again, it's indexed. The index marks point towards the centre of the echelon. Okay, it says um, ISV. Um, appears to say ISV. Um, could say 51. Depends on your take on you know how you read it, but it's quite a useful index mark. That arrow is pointing inside towards um, towards the eyepiece, I guess. Okay, so I'm just going to pop those down. It's covered in this grease now on the faces, but I'm not too worried about that. That's really quite easy to clean up, um, like so. So we'll just pop that down. Um, right, next bit, the remainder of it. Inside here, what we've got is this foam ring. Um, this comes out. Just use the screwdriver to pick it out. There we go. Um, it really doesn't seem anything special to me. There's a couple of um, what seem to be sticky pad locators or something, which you can see where they sit. Maybe just about C. Let's try and get some shadows here. You can see the imprint of where this etalon sits in here. You can see for some considerable time it's not been sat centralised at all. Um, but again, let's do some measurements. We've got the ruler. Let's use it. Um, what have we got? Four mil thick. Um, central hole, 22 mil. 30 mil diameter. Um, that's going to put that at. Should be what. What are we on? About, it's quite difficult to measure. About 5 mil. There about 32, 30 mil. I suspect that's uh, an inch and a quarter across if I'm going to guess at numbers. Um, the only other bit that remains in here then is the rear collimating lens, like so. Um, and again, really easily, all we do is use our ruler to unscrew it. Again, no Loctite. Um, that just comes out. Let me show you this. There we go. Um, that comes out really, really easily, like so. Um, quite conveniently on here, there is another index mark that marks towards the towards the etalon, um, points towards the etalon like so. Again, singlet lens, um, no acromats here. Um, Twenty, just over shade over 25 mil in diameter. I would suggest 25.4 mil in diameter, which would be an inch. And um, to me, this leaves interesting possibilities of actually replacing these collimating lenses. For other suitable lenses to suit different focal lens scopes. So, for instance, if you were using um, a 150mm f/8 scope for hydro and alpha, used with the current configuration, it's going to be running at f/10. So, in effect, you're stopping it down to 125mm. If we could change this, um, these collimating lenses for f/8 collimating lenses as opposed to f/10. What you find is you are then all of a sudden you're going to adjust the distance. It's not going to be a minus 200. Um, if it's f8, it's going to be uh, it's, it's going to be minus 160. Um, but all of a sudden, you use utilising the full 150 mil aperture. Okay, um, lenses like this, web websites like um, Iopoisa, um, Edmunds Optics, um, they are pretty cheap. I was looking at a f8 one last night on the Poisa website for 10 GBP, which is pretty cheap. Okay, so this is the way it goes together. 
really simple not much to see in there that's all one solid unit no more moving parts in there at all um, really straightforward really easy piece of kit and um, to reassemble is just as easy so I know there's fingerprints on I'm not worried about those I'm going to clean those up um, later on because it would take much longer to do this um, if we have to clean them up so first thing put the rear, rear, rear assembly in I'm um, looking for my index mark there it is I don't know if you can see that there um, that points inwards so we just pop that in like so um, just a rear retaining cell like that that just sits on like that and just um, use our ruler again handy rules handy things these inch rules um, it's important those are tight those are going to slop around else um, next thing we have got the foam ring that needs to go back inside um, this I suspect these spaces are going to be a little bit of tilt on our rattle on um, when you look inside you can see where they went as an index mark so you a little footprint so we're just going to pop that back in, bear with me a second to get that onto shot, he says looking in the sunlight there we go, oops and just pop that back in like so there we go and um, we'll just use a screwdriver just to pop him in like that, so that's, that's back in as it was um, next stage is our Ethelon again it's really grubby um, not too worried about that, I will, that will clean up again you can see which way it, fit. it sits by the, the imprint of that is left in the grease on that side and the imprint of that o-ring is left on that side so I can tell this is going in the right way round so I'm just going to pop that in like that that's sitting back in there um, next stage is our compression ring here that just screws back in like so whoops that was just like cross thread it there. You can feel when it goes back in. There you go, that's just screwing back in. Um, how far does it screw back in? Well, I'll show you. You don't want it to sit tight because you know it's not going to sit tight. Um, but if we screw this down, what I've found is it's roughly equidistant the space is there, so that's giving us a, a rough idea. So it's just like tight there. I know for a fact because I've, I've put a thread in that one. That, that when that's sat roughly central I'm in the right ballpark so I know that's pretty much set up that's within the tuning range um, next thing our front collimating lens that just screws back in again once you've disassembled it this can all be done by hand um, I'll get that back in there you go or alternatively that can screw on the end of a nose piece um, to get it up the tube higher up the tube if you don't want to put your tube down so, um, just screw that down. Easier to do this with a ruler. Um, there we go. I can tell by the noise it's making. It's starting to bind. Is it? Yeah, that's starting to bind. There we go. That's nice and tight. There we go. All back together. Um, I can tell by looking through, it's a little concentric ring pattern when you look through, you tell it's working okay, a bit grubby at the moment but all that will clean up, not too worried about that at all. Okay so there you go, disassembling and reassembling a PST Ethelon. Um, inside that little bit there really is quite a simple piece of kit I think. Cheers, thank you.